Hello guys, welcome back to our channel. My name is Verilene Nkosi. In this lesson, we learn about osmoregulation. So osmoregulation is the process where our body regulate water inside our blood. So here I have the examination guideline. So we are still on endocrine system and homeostasis. So we'll be looking at the homeostasis and the negative feedback mechanism. But today we'll be on water balance, which is osmo regulation. So make sure you have this guideline since it's the one that is guiding us to do the lessons. So first of all, uh, let me define what is homeostasis. So homeostasis is the process of maintaining a constant internal environment in narrow limits. So this is the definition of a homeostasis. And then despite the changes that takes place internally and externally, it doesn't matter if these changes take place inside the body or outside the body, but homeostasis will maintain constant internal environment. So for example, here I have uh, some small dem some demonstration with this graph. So this graph is for temperature balance. So the temperature in our body, it stands around 37.5 degrees. So, but since some stimulus may affect the temperature, so our body has to make sure that this temperature remains in a narrow limits. Like during respiration, our body produces heat. So if our body produces heat, then this heat might affect our body temperature. So the next day, our body, again, it must make sure the heat remains around 37.5 or it might happen that we sit on the sun where it's very hot this may affect the body temperature again our body must make sure that our temperature remains 37.5 so it doesn't matter if this changes is internally or external like here if you see this changes it narrow limits so it like it's very it's very small so this is the examples of, or it's an example of homeostasis. There is a mechanism that is responsible for homeostasis to be possible. The, that mechanism is called a negative feedback mechanism. So a negative feedback mechanism is a regulatory mechanism in which a stimulus causes an opposite in order to maintain balance. So here I have an example. This is the a seesaw like here we have homeostasis if you see like this rectangle here it's on homeostasis while this one it's in balance so this one it's in balance so if this subject here becomes in balance there must be a stimulus that causes this imbalance like if we stay in a hot day or in a place where it's very hot so the stimulus it's this temperature from external so this temperature is called is the stimulus it will cause in mm, the temperature to rise and then so for a negative feedback there must be a stimulus there must be a receptor there must be a control center and then there must be a, an effect so now i will explain the role of each part here so the stimulus will produce in balance so the stimulus will produce the changes is the one that will cause these changes and then as these changes has taken place, this receptor, they will detect the changes. So receptor here will detect the changes. The receptor could be the skin. Receptor could be a gland. Could, this could be anything that will detect that something is not level now. So something must take place. And then this receptor will send a message to the control send. Like the input here, the input information is sent along the afferent pathway to control send so the afferent pathway is a pathway that is moving towards the control center or moving towards so this receptor send a message will send a message to the control center so to take action and then this control center it will respond and send a message to the effect like here the output from the control center information sent along the efferent pathway to activate an effector so this effector will be activated like to take action 
So, and then the effector will respond and then as it respond, it will maintain the balance. So, respondent of the effector return to changes by stimulus to homeostasis. So now, this effector will reverse the action of the stimulus. So this is how negative feedback works. So you need, there must be a stimulus and then there must be a receptor that uh, detect the changes and then a control sender that is controlling all the situation and then the effector that will take an action to reverse the process. So now let's see how osmoregulation works. So in osmoregulation, these three parts here are the ones that are responsible to maintain water balance in our blood. Like we have hypothalamus. Hypothalamus is the receptor. It's the one that will detect the changes. And then pituitary gland is the control center. It's the one that will send a message to the effector and while the kidney is the effector. So with water regulation, so hypothalamus will detect that there is no balance in the in in our blood so the water level is not balanced then hypothalamus it will send a message to pituitary gland is either to release adh or to stop releasing adh so and then every action that will take by the pituitary gland is either if it stop releasing the adh kidney will respond to that if it releases more adh again kidney will respond to that but in a different way of when it say it releases the adh so now let me explain the process so how will you write during examination so here i have a nephron a nephron it's a functioning part of a kidney so the kidney when we talk about kidney the functioning part is the nephron so in nephron we have this convoluted tubule and then we have collecting duct and we have this blood vessel so this blood vessel are closer to these tubules so if water move out of this tubule it will move back to the blood so what happened is if it happens that uh, we have the when the blood has less water than normal so it might happen that we were exercising or we, we didn't drink water so there's less water in our blood so this will detect by the hypothalamus. So the hypothalamus, it stimulated because there is no balance in the, in our blood. And then this hypothalamus will send impulse to the pituitary gland to secrete more ADH in the blood. And then now, since the hypothalamus is a receptor, and then it will send a message to the control center. So the control center is the pituitary gland to secrete more ADH. And then the ADH will travel to the kidney. So now uh, ADH will travel to the kidney via this blood vessels. So here are the blood. And then as the ADH travels to the blood, ADH increases the permeability of the collecting duct and the DCT or distal convoluted tubule. So if there is ADH running through the blood, so it will cause this tubule to be permeable. That is mean it will be able to, more water will diffuse out of this tubule and then move to the blood vessel or water will move out of this, these tubules. And then as water move out of the tubules here, they say more water is reabsorbed. Then that is mean more water will move out of this tubule and then reabsorb back to the blood vessels and then passes to the surrounding blood vessel. So water will move here, move out to the blood vessel, and then the water level in the blood returns to normal. So then now water level will return to normal. Now we are no longer having a less water than normal. So this is the process of osmoregulations. If less water is found in the blood or if there is a less water in the blood. And then here the next example is if when blood has more water than normal so this is the opposite the one that i just explained so if there is more water than normal the hypothalamus is stimulated and then it sends impulse to the pituitary gland to secrete less or no adh in the blood so this time no adh or less is secreted in the blood like 
this statement is the one that is changing, then no ATH is travel to the kidney. So another changes is here. There is no ADH travels to the kidney and the collecting duct and the distal convoluted tubule become less permeable. Then there won't be any water moves out of this tubule to the blood vessel. So we, we won't have any water moving here because there is more water in the blood. So the blood doesn't need water and then less water is reabsorbed. So now less water is reabsorbed because already our blood has more water level and then no water will passes to the surrounding blood vessels so that is mean water will be lost through the urine so our urine will be more down diluted because now our blood has more water or we are over hydration and then the water level in the blood returns to normal since there is no water moves out of this tubule to the blood vessel so this is how uh, osmo regulations so you can use this to explain it during final examination or during the test so you won't get wrong if you use this method of explaining the osmo regulation so this is the end of this video if you have watched this far thank you very much please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so if you are studying good luck with your studies Thank you very much. God bless you.